Right, guys, Let welcome back. Begin. Oh, fuck, he ruins my intros as well. <laughs> <laughs> Right, guys, welcome back, welcome back. My name, as always, is Bam De Havoc. Yes, because uh, that's that's the name I was given, and uh, thank you very much for that guy that gave me that name. And the Draconis is joining me. Guys, today, we are going to talk about cider. Yes, we had some interesting freaking comments in the last uh, episode about our cider escapades. So, Drac and I decided to indulge you. And it totally wasn't the fact that we completely blew this week's audio because we were idiots. It wasn't that reason at all, I promise. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh-huh. No, really, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, cider is the topic then. Uh, where do you want to start? Well, you see, for me, it's all about the type of uh, brew you use. You know, when you, if you've got everything clean, everything's got to be freaking spotlessly clean. And I've got a pen and paper and I write down everything I do. Uh, particularly when it comes to, to cleanliness, because the end result is directly impacted on the cleanliness for me anyway. Yeah, I use the, uh, what is it, star sand or something like that, I think it is. Uh, just to sanitize everything before I get going. So I use something from Amazon. It's it's really, really good. Um, how do you clean it? Do you use boiling water or do you use warm, tepid water? Well, okay, so I found, uh, so far I'm on my fourth brew, so I'm by no means any kind of expert, but I found that when I was boiling a gallon of water or even half a gallon of water, because um, like a lot of the instructions that I was following initially would say boil a gallon of water, uh, it made it too hot. It was far too hot. But then I also wasn't using like frigid cold water to add to the boiling water, which is probably why. I go down to the store and I buy bottled water to use with uh, the cider brewing um, just to keep it as you know as clean as possible uh, so I found that I'll take maybe it might even be a third of a gallon at the most and then bring that close to a boil add the couple pounds of sugar and then after that uh, once it's all mixed in really well put in you know all of the water as well as the uh, the cider mix that you get which is like a concentrated apple juice um, make sure that's at the right temperature before I add the the, uh, the yeast to it but that's that's initially how I'll start now as far as cleaning it goes uh, more or less I just kind of wash everything out with hot water and then add the sanitizer to that and then sanitize all the stuff that I'm going to be using Jesus you play fast and loose dude I boil everything <laughs> I, 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 I honest to god I boil everything the bit that worries me right is that the plastic I'm using is food grade plastic okay so you can you can basically melt this damn stuff and it won't freaking kill you but I find that when I use boiling water which is why I asked the question Question. the plastic droops a little bit just a little bit droopage so um, what I do is I tend to put like uh, two or three liters of uh, cold water in first and I don't use bottled water to clean I use the tap water but then water in the UK is very different from the US apparently in the US the water is horrible from the taps so you guys do use a lot of bottled water so I just basically boil uh, about a gallon of water uh, add two liters of water into the ba base of the bucket and then I pour it in and I clean it with that um, sanitizer stuff that WP clean or whatever you want to call it and I know whatever I do I, I just let everything sit in that bucket for about half an hour that's the hoses that's the the bottles that I you know use to brew with and then when I'm finished I just literally take the bottles out cork the bottles and leave them and all the water sitting in the bottles as well and then I just basically rinse it out with uh, tap water you you use bottled water to brew with I don't I just use tap water and boil that that's interesting I'm gonna try, I'll try that next time I'll brew with <laughs> bottled water because I do use a um a Brit a Britia a Brit uh, a Brita, a Brita filter system. Um, oh yeah, see, I don't have one of those back at, at my house, so um, I don't. I, if I had a Brita filter, then I might do that. But it's just easy enough to go down to the store and buy like five, six gallons, you know, individual gallon water bottles, and then just pour them in as you know. I fill everything up. I'm I'm a little bit anal with that. You Brita filter for the water that goes into the pots, right? I then boil the water, add the sugar to the boiling water because that means it kills any bacteria similar to what you do. Uh, and then I just basically pour it into the bucket with all the juices and whatever have you this brew that i've got on now actually is from proper apple juice so it's it's going to be interesting to taste the difference because like yourself i just used the brew kit and that's concentrated apple juice well um, yeah so you said you actually went out this last time and you got a bunch of apples so that was something i've been thinking about doing but it requires you know being able to mash up the apples and stuff with some equipment that i don't have right now so how long did that take you <laughs> dude an inordinate amount of labor for what is being produced i'll tell you what 
because I need a military grade apple press. So what I did was in the UK up north, there's apple trees just growing everywhere. And you can go to people front doors, knock on the doors. Yes, I was that person. If anyone hears this, that was me. I knocked on your door. So listen, you got an apple tree in the back garden, all the fruits falling on the floor and rotting. Can I have your apples? And a moment of lie, every single person I said, yes, yes, we don't even eat these damn things, you know? Um, we, we were planning on uprooting the tree anyway. I'm like, oh, frick, I'm all over that. So Granny Smith's um, Golden Delicious uh, Gala. There was some sort of very small gala-like looking apple. Um, Grab that with like three three massive bin bag liners of these apples. I know whatever I got about, the first time I got about two liters from all these apples. I had to go back and go out again and go out again and get more apples. And I eventually got about uh, 12 liters. So that's that's a lot. And then, but what I did was I didn't bother peeling them. I did call them because I'm, I'm adamant that you crush those apple seeds, which have trace amounts of cyanide. You know, you're basically going to poison yourself. So I called every single apple I got. I didn't bother with peeling them and stuck them in the, the old uh, apple cider press and pressed it. You know, basically it's a, it's a screw on a plate with a couple of blocks of wood and all the juice just flows out. I'll tell you what, very tart, very tart, neat um, apple juice. And it's going to be interesting to see what this tastes like. Very interesting. Since I did up the alcohol content as well, by putting in a kilogram of sugar. So my guess was that the apples themselves will produce about four and a half. This is with the specific gravity uh, meter that I got. And after I added the kilogram of sugar, it looks like the projected alcohol content is going to be between eight and a half and seven. Um, so I'm, I, I wanted to circle back real quick. As far as the amount of apples it takes to get this, you're working, I think, similarly to me as far as the bucket size that you work out of yeah, yeah. is like a six gallon bucket or something yeah, like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so if you had to put it in terms of how many buckets of apples to fill that up, how wh- wh- what point are you at? Like how many buckets of apples did it about take? Four. To f- about four. About, <laughs> but that was, that was just to get the two lead, um Let's see. Uh, because it's uh, honest to God, I reckon I didn't apply enough pressure to this to these apples. I need a proper, full-on, like mechanical, electric pump-driven sort of um, press, where that just puts like several tonnage, proper proper tonnage on these apples. Because a lot of the apples are coming out moist, which is why I put some of the pulp into the actual brew as well. Um, I used a Brita filter as well to um, to yeah, obviously with the siphon. Um, I used a Brita filter to fill these uh, demijohns up as well, so I could filter out all this pulp. Um, anyway, so so I, I reckon it's about I reckon about four buckets to get about two liters, and I reckon it's all down to me not being able to compress enough um, to get the juices out. So I, I need a, like a proper industrial mechanical freaking press where basically if the press is so hard, the apple apple pulp is dust. You know, so yeah. <laughs> It's dust. <laughs> no, dude, seriously, it needs to be dust because when 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 you when I unwound the cheesecloth and pulled it out of the actual press, the bag was wet still. You know, it was still wet, and I'm like thinking, you know, Jesus Christ, man, what, what the hell's going on here? There's still apple juice in these apples, and I'm not getting it. So I've I've got a I've got a 30 ton bearing press that I've got at work. So I'm thinking about, and all that essentially is is a is a 30 ton car jack uh, on a on a metal bar, and it push down the metal bar, and you get like a set of um. Uh, push rods and whatever to push bearings on uh, inside out of so wheel hubs and whatever have you. So I'm thinking about getting a car jack, okay, and basically bastardizing it in such a fashion that it basically pushes down on a block of wood uh, with some um, heavy wrought iron. So basically it can withstand the tonnage or, or stainless steel or whatever. I think stainless steel would be better, right? Sure, better choice, I think. Um, I don't really want to taste cattle grid when I um, drink my cider. So I think I'll be using that, like a 5 ton, 10 ton car jack, and I just basically jack the living shit out to this apples next year, I think. It's, it's all a learning process, you see, for me. It really is. I, I write down everything I've got. So three bin bag liners, that was about uh, 20 kilograms of apples. Um, I got about 12 liters, so I could basically fill up two demijohns, two five liter demijohns. I've left the bottom two liters because that was all just yeast and sediment and pulp. So I've got I've got two demijohns of proper apple cider. And I used champagne yeast as well this time around because uh, it's it's more durable in the temp- you know, temperature differences and whatever have you. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Is there a letter and number code with that yeast? Because the stuff that I, I I switched, I'm I'm also trying a different brand this time just to see what the difference is. And I switched to this different brand of of uh, like brewing packet because I was reading about the the specific yeast they used, which was like M02 or something like that. Um, Does your cider have a qualifier like, or you know some type of uh, code or something like that? I in in my experience, and I've been brewing now for three years, and like yourself, I'm no way 
is in any shape or form a master brewer. There's some guys on YouTube out there that know whatever like can brew alcohol out of neat water. Know whatever like. Right, I don't have to, I, I'm not a brewer. I, I'm just an enthusiast. Okay. Now, for my experience, yeast is just yeast. It'll do the same damn job. For me, it was uh, temperature control. Now, because I'm in England and uh, it's autumn and it's quite cool, um, I have had to brew and um, do things inside the house. And because we've got a central heating system, the heating is always at around 15 degrees, sometimes spiking to 25, you know, in the evenings, in the mornings, you know, when everyone's getting up, turn the heating on to 25 for a couple of minutes and that heats the whole house. So I needed a yeast that was more temperature resistant to the, the massive drastic bits and pieces. No word of a lie though, to help insert. I didn't just neat put the bottles out in the freaking open. I've wrapped them up <laughs> in a blanket. <laughs> Hey, I've done the same. I've done the same with my bucket. I put a blanket around mine because it was actually in the evening. It gets chilly enough, so yeah, yeah. it's to help insulate the heat, right? So for me, it's 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 a blanket around mine to sort of insulate it a bit more, and I put it near um, the radiator. Now I've got to keep it out the path of my kids because my kids will play with the damn thing. So it's in my room with my wife and me, and every so often you you can hear this. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. She doesn't like it. She says I should get my own la la la. So this is part of the man cave. I'm I'm gonna be I'm getting a radiator installed into the man cave because the man cave ain't got no heating. So I'll be doing my my cider blip blip blipping inside the man cave, which has got a small little radiator soon. So yeah, that'll be very. Interesting. Well, it's good that you remember to put water in that little thing at the top of the bucket. You sure, you're not talking about yourself, Drax. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let, let me enlighten to you this story, right? Uh, so, no, wait, wait, wait. Dr- let me no, 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 this no, no. story with the fact that there were no instructions that came oh, with that on, thing that said anything about putting water in it. It's common sense. It's called a water trap. It's a no, water No, I don't think trap. that's what it was called when I ordered it. What did they call it? Trapping of water? Actually, I th- no, actually, you know what? I think it came with the bucket kit or something like that. I just don't remember them saying anything about putting water in it. Well, well, okay. It's not meant to be water. It's meant to be sanitized. Anyway, long story short, <coughs> Drag did his first brew, and uh, he asked me one day, bam, everyone says there's meant to be bubbles and stuff. I don't see any bubbles. I'm like, Drac, what are you talking about? So the story revolves, and it turns out he didn't put any water. You've got a, a, a cup and ball. No, not a cup and ball. You've got the two cup water trap, haven't you? One yeah. Up, one upturned cup, one normal face cup with a lid over it, haven't you? Something like that, yeah. Whereas I've got the I've got the uh, triple bubble u bend, And I'm like, you need water in that freaking that, uh, thing, because what happens is it's a one-way system. So nothing Nothing, nothing nasty can get back into it and spoil your brew. And this was like, what, three weeks into the brew now, Drac? No, no, because it only stays in the bucket for the first week. So I want to say it was probably, it was more than halfway in through the first week. Might have even been like two thirds of the way through the first week. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, I get Drac to put water in this thing and it starts bubbling. Thankfully, his brew didn't spoil because the yeast he used was producing that much CO2. It was just throwing it out and nothing could get back in due to to the pressures and whatever have you. So Drake managed it did to solve get back it. In, it didn't mess it didn't mess it up. But I will say this, it does not call it a water lock. I'm looking at the, the product description right now on Amazon. It calls it a three piece airlock. Oh! My good God, it's an airlock. What do airlocks use? Water. Keep in mind, <laughs> it says airlock, and I've never brewed before this point in time in the story. <laughs> but this this is no whatever. But this is the see, I, I bully Drac, right? Give you further bit of information. I bullied Drac into brewing cider or beer or something for you how long? Bully about, me. I, I bullied you for about a year, didn't I? No, I kept talking about wanting to do it, and I'd wanted to do it for a very long time, but I was always nervous that it was going to be far more complicated than it actually is. And and I was always worried about screwing it up and spending all this money and then basically being left with, you know, vinegar or something that tasted really bad. No, no, no. Don't steal my thunder now. I bullied you into getting a cider brew kit and you bullied me into getting a, a, a better laptop to actually do things with. <laughs> <laughs> See, I give you credit for that and you better give me credit for this. Anyway, so his, his first brew, his first brew ever brew, uh, what was it? Seven and a half percent, Drac? Yeah, it was somewhere around there. Seven, eight percent, something like that. Yeah. And it floored you, didn't it? Oh, no, it was really good. It tasted yeah. really good. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah. followed the instructions. That's the funny thing. It's it, it, In some ways, it's just like cooking. You know, people make a big deal out of making turkeys or, you know, whatever. But it's really not that complicated, especially if you have a good set of instructions. So, anyway... The reason why we're talking about cider today is because I really like cider. Leading on to what's happening in March, okay? Myself, Drac, and G are meeting up. This is the first time three madmen from three different parts of the world are going to meet up in one part of the world, and uh, we're all going to drink cider. So G's got the specific cider. I think it's called Liederman Apple Beer. 
And I've been chasing that particular taste in my side of brewing ever since I tasted it. And I failed every single time. G is going to be bringing over two bottles. And after Drac tastes that bottle of Liedemann apple beer, I swear to God, he's going to be chasing that taste too. Because it is like drinking apple juice. But oh my God, has it got a punch? Is this where we cut to the commercial for the, the particular beer product? <laughs> Don't I wish, right? <laughs> I tell you what, that's that stuff is so unknown in the UK that if it was imported here, it would it would take off. Honestly, it beats the pants off of any local I say local cider bro, I shouldn't have said that. I should say industrial cider maker, such as uh uh Stella Artois Cedir uh, and Magnus and um okay, Woodpeck is pretty good. It's the cheap stuff, but it's actually pretty good cider. So on and so forth. If that stuff came to the UK and had a bit of an aggressive marketing campaign and got people to drink it, I tell you what it would fly off the shelves it really would it's great i've been taste tra- chasing that taste ever which is what made me go to actually picking and selecting the apples myself okay granted i put all three different types of apples in one bucket maybe i should have just brewed one individual apple you know all that sort of stuff but i haven't done that um i didn't have enough of each to do one decent brew but anyway uh to force myself to actually use apple juice this time and then augment it with additional alcohol content because that lead them inside is something like 7.5 percent and and I was only getting say, uh, four, four and a half out of the apple juice, so I had to add the extra sugar. I just hope to God the extra sugar doesn't uh, make it too caustic. Caustic is the right word. Um, acrid? I think acrid is the right word when it comes to cider alcohol because it, it can be overpowering. I have made apple wine, which is like ten and a half percent. That was the last brew I did, and I drank half a pint of this stuff, and I was laid out. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. It laid me the shit out. Good cider. Oh, kind of like that recording we did where I had two leaves of cider while we were doing the recording this was my homebrew stuff and all i'd had to eat that day was a peanut butter sandwich <laughs> the best part about cider is that i don't know it's something about how the body absorbs it it absorbs it so completely and so utterly that it will just lay you out completely and i think um the states it's called hard cider whereas apple juice needs yeah. is just called cider isn't it well because you can get apple cider here which is basically like pressed i guess from the apples and its juice but still has pulp in it and so that's considered just cider and then the hard cider has an alcohol content so they just specify it more i guess whereas in the uk it's apple juice and then cider so you guys probably don't strain the apple juice uh so that it's clear and free of pulp there is there is two types of apple juice you can get there is the clear lovely golden brown stuff you can get or there is the murky pulpy stuff you can get i'm more in favor of the pulpy stuff because I'm I'm weird. I like ap- orange juice pulp. I like apple pulp. There's pear pulp. I, was, I yeah, like I was, pulp. I was just going to say, it sounds like you guys uh, sell and market the apple juice uh, there, just like orange juice, with or without pulp. Yeah. I mean, I know you you pay the same price regardless, but and I know there's less apple juice in the pulp. It just tastes better. I don't know. I mean, I'll drink the normal stuff. No qualms. If, but if I had a choice, I'd go for the pulp. I, I don't know why. So when you're straining yours, though, after the... When you get to the point where you're bottling it... Um, <laughs> What are you using to strain it through? Because I know you've talked about coffee filters, but is that all you're using? Because I always end up with some sediment in each bottle, and I strain it through a couple of different coffee filters, trying to get as much of that out as possible. There's a specific coffee filter I use that's got like, um, I don't know, like a micron rating or something. But then what I also do, and I'm not sure if I should be doing this, is I also put it through a fresh uh, Brita filter as well. So it goes through the Brita filter, okay, and then it goes through um, two separate coffee filters, like with a, with a micron rating or whatever have you then it goes into the actual um, the small bottles that I've got so that, that's how I do it and yes no matter what I do I can't seem to get rid of this damn sediment but the sediment is so fine and so and such a little amount of it that I don't really mind it <laughs> excuse me well I mean and to be clear it, it doesn't hurt anything to drink that stuff it doesn't cause any problems and from what I understand I don't think it actually really has much if any of effect on the taste um, but just just for you know easy on the eye you know sake when you you know pick up the bottle it's nice if the bottle's just nice and clear and there's no sediment in there. You were talking about them ones that you basically store them upside down. It's got a catch-all at the bottom of the lid, hasn't it? And all you have oh, to do I'm, is a right-sided and twist and it's, there's no sediment in the 
Oh, claro. I've, I've been considering getting one of those um, instead of using the bucket that I'm using now, using something like that. I would be interested to see how that works. Yeah, you you talk about chasing flavor, that flavor, that one specific one. Um, I know you frown on this because of how, what your reactions have been when I mentioned the brand before, but uh, one of the ones I've really liked that I used to be able to get a hold of out here was Strongbow, and it was their honey flavored. And I haven't tried adding honey to mine yet, but I would like to do that because that taste was really good, and I can't find it anymore. They had it for a while, then it disappeared. I can still find Strongbow, but I can never find the honey flavor. Now, I'm sure Strongbow in America tastes very different to Strongbow in the UK. Strongbow in the UK tastes like industrial sewage. That is honestly the kindest thing I can say about it. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound too good. Maybe the aging process of shipping it from there to here makes it taste better. <laughs> there, there, there's, there's a common misconception. I don't think they age and ship it. I think they brew it in the States go to state to, to an American pellet. You know what I mean? Whereas oh, they the, might. So that's that's my thought behind it. So I would be keen to see if Strongbow in the state buy me a buy me a freaking can and bring it across. Oh, yeah, right. No, do it. Do it. You're allowed to do it, dude. Do it. No, I can't bring that stuff through the, the uh, airport. Yes, you can. Stick it in your bag. Let it explode in your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never get it through uh, custom or not customs. I'll never get it through security unless uh, I, I suppose if I popped a bottle open and I put it in one of those little tiny eight ounce containers, I could maybe get it through. <laughs> Look at us, mastermind smugglers. <laughs> no, so so here's here's the thing, right? Honey can be used as um, an alcohol booster, right? And so instead of adding your sugar, you add your honey. Okay, it won't make it any sweeter. So the sweetness comes from your from your bottling process, right? So instead of adding your sugar, you add your honey. Okay, and then you basically consume it as and when you bloody well want. So you pour like a tablespoon of honey into the bottle, and then you add the cider to the bottle, and it basically circulates itself, and it basically makes it sweeter. If you use honey as your alcohol booster um there won't be much i don't think there will there will be much much flavor um increase and i'm only basing that off the fact that i use caster sugar because it's easier to freaking um liquefy in in warm water compared to granule sugar but i have used brown sugar i've used uh, demerara sugar i've used full-on cane sugar there's a jamaican shop down the way that sells raw sugar like proper stodgy raw sugar and stuff I, i use that and i don't really see a difference in taste you know i'm looking for that sort of ca- I was looking for a caramel sort of taste I think you've done this before as well and I yeah just I was got actually cider. a little disappointed because I did do one with brown sugar trying to get that caramel taste and didn't it didn't seem to have much of an effect on the taste um so yeah that was actually a little bit disappointing so so in my my opinion which is often um a hot topic of contention is that it doesn't matter what sugar you use sugar sugar you know it's just various states of um of uh, processing white sugar has been bleached to the living nth degree whereas the brown sugars and the um, so on and so forth haven't. So they've still got some impurities. Uh, so honey, for me, I don't think would change anything in the first stage brewing process, uh, but it will do when you bottle it, I think, you see. So maybe maybe that. So brew your brew your cider the way you normally brew it, and don't add any funny feff to it, and when you b- come to bottle it, stick a tablespoon of honey into the thing, fill it up to the base of the neck and see what that does. That's, yeah, I mean, well, uh, let's see, when I add the flavors now, basically the, the process for the brew that I'm doing right at this moment. Uh, I started it on Thanksgiving, so Thursday, and it'll it'll run through this Thursday of this week, uh, at which point I'll pop open the, the bucket and I will add the flavorings that I want to it, stir it up, and then let it sit for a couple days to let all of that stuff settle down again, which, by the way, these kits that we pick up that I get up you know, on Amazon that we use, that's part of the process. It comes with a flavoring packet that you can add to it that's supposed to help increase or accentuate the apple taste. So any flavorings I want to do, I add at the same point that I add that flavor enhancement. Um, so I'll, this Thursday, I'll pop open the bucket. I'll put that stuff in, stir it up, close the bucket again, let it sit. And then Saturday or Sunday, I'll go in and that's when I'll start the bottling process. Um, if I was going to do honey, though, I think I might do like what you're saying, because trying to measure the right amount of honey and make sure that it gets mixed in. Yeah, that that might be a little more difficult than adding some liquid flavoring to it. And then two on some of the bottles, I like to add cinnamon sticks to them and 
and get uh, get that cinnamon flavor. So I'll take like a regular cinnamon stick, cut it in half, and put it in the liter bottle, and that's plenty to give it a nice, good cinnamon taste. I'm going to try that, actually. Cinnamon stick, actually. Um, but th- here's a question. Do you leave it in for seven days exactly, or do you let it just brew itself out, and then you add your flavor, and, st- and then you bottle it into the demijohns for the second stage fermentation? Because I-, I-, I fermented twice. Yeah, so I, it's between seven and ten days before I bottle it. So uh, just depending on how time is working out, when I have enough time, because it, the, the process of bottling, um, I think what you said you do is you clean everything at the very beginning. Yes. And the very first time I brewed, I did that, but then the bottles sat there for a week before I even used them. And I just felt like, well, eh, maybe, you know, and then I, what I started doing after that was I kind of just, when I do the second stage fermentation, when I shift to putting everything in a bottle, that's when I sanitize the bottles. Oh, so, oh, oh, don't, yes, I do the same thing. I clean the bottles out regardless of the needing cleaning or not. I clean everything everything it's like proper freaking surgical maneuvers here seriously yeah so I, like when i when i go to I clean too. yeah when i go to bottle it i'll clean all the bottles which takes a while even though i'm using liter bottles i end up i've got about well i want to say i want to say now i might have almost 30 I've, i have 24 one liter bottles for sure because i ordered that many but now i i've acquired a few other bottles since then uh, and i won't be able to fill all those up uh, but i will fill most of them i'll probably fill about 22 of the one liter bottles just right around where i get before or I get too low in the bucket, and um, yeah, no, it's uh, the process takes a while because you've got to you've got to take all of the uh, the brew from from the fermentation bucket into the other bucket that's going to have a spigot on it so that you can take it from there and bottle it, and it just it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, here's the carry on. Sorry, carry on. Oh no, it's just it because it, you don't want to just pour it out of the fermentation bucket because then you get all the yeast. So you've got to like siphon yeah. it out of the the fermentation bucket into the other one. That takes a little while. Then once you have it in there then you know and you've got everything cleaned and you're good to go you then you got to put it into each bottle and it takes a little while to fill up each bottle but they have some really cool stuff again i keep mentioning amazon because it's just easy enough that i've gone to amazon for all this stuff but you can go to local brew stores too and pick this stuff up but they have cool little little tools that you can use and one of the ones i picked up is uh it's it's like this tube that's got a little valve at the very bottom of it that is activated by pushing on this little pin so basically you attach it to the to the tube and you put it down in the bottle and there's long as it's pressing against the bottom of the bottle it'll let the liquid out and fill up the bottle and that makes filling up these bottles a lot faster i might ask you to acquire me one please that yeah, sounds I, fucking I can send you epic a link. that sounds epic no seriously that sounds brilliant because i've got a valve <laughs> open valve close valve <laughs> That's oh yeah no best. yeah no this is nice yeah messy I'll send you the as link. hell i hate bottling bottling is so messy but here's another question right so with your bucket do you fill it up to the full 24 liters or 30 liters however you brew it or do you like do like 18 liters sometimes just to help with the concentration uh i fill it up with about five gallons of water plus the juice packet that comes so you haven't been fighting that watery sort of taste when it comes to cider i've been lowering my water content in my cider by two liters and i find that between 16 and 18 liters seems to be the the magic mark for me with where with regards to um having like that watery taste to it with with the sort of 18 liters it seems to be completely eliminated whereas before i was brewing sort of 24 26 according to the brew pack because like you i follow the instructions to the nth fucking degree and i I kept on getting this water off taste now when i dropped it drop it down by i dropped about two liters and then just following suit every time i brew it i brew two liters less and with the 18 liters i find that it's concentrated more um i don't <clears throat> have a seven day primary brew i have like a like a like a 14 15 day primary brew so my my, my cider was brewing for like a two weeks or still bubbling just churning out the bubbles and then the, the secondary ferment goes into the big ass five liter demijohn i put in um two cups of sugar so it's 500 grams of sugar roughly into boiling water mixed it all put it at the base of these demijohns and then i basically siphoned in the 10 lot the 10 liters and then i got extra i got an extra alcohol kick because uh, i tasted it and it didn't taste as well, it didn't taste as alcoholic as I wanted. So basically, I, I I added some extra sugar to the bottles to increase the alcohol content, which pushed me to eight and a half percent on the secondary ferment. Now I don't know if I was supposed to do that because these these uh, the cider is actually for Christmas because we're having a massive family Christmas, and I'm basically going to be pulling out these um, water traps, corking them, shoving them in the fridge to basically halt the ferment because you can stop fermentation by stick it in the damn fridge. Yeah, I haven't tried cutting 
cutting down on how much water I'm putting in to get a little bit more of a concentrated one. But actually, that sounds that that sounds like that could actually be good and get a little bit stronger of a taste. But you see here, here's where where I think you haven't been getting the the watery taste because you use flavorings. I I don't. Whenever I order a brew packet, I never ever get the sweet. I just get the yeast and I get the um the concentrated apple juice. Okay, obviously this time I had to go and buy myself champagne yeast and <laughs> and all this stuff. But I didn't use any sweetness to tart it up. I just used sugar in the second stage ferment, which you could sort of <coughs> you could argue was a sweetener, but it wasn't the um that sort of uh, a sachet you put in that makes it taste more of apple. I, I I don't get that in in the brew kit. I'd like to try one. So if you've got a spare packet of apple apple um flavor enhancer floating about, I take it as a powder, not 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 a, not a liquid. No, it is a liquid. Okay, I, I'd like to try one. Bring one across. I'll brew with it. And that's that's one of the reasons why I add whatever other flavoring. Like l- the last brew that I did last year, I added vanilla. Uh, and this year, my first brew, I'm going to add pumpkin flavoring, and it, it comes as a liquid, which is much. It, it looks and it smells almost like it might be mixed with some vanilla extract. I'm not really sure, but um, the vanilla flavoring and and the pumpkin stuff that I've purchased again on Amazon, this stuff is all. It it says that it's made for beer and wine. So anybody listening to this, if you're finding this informative and you're thinking about brewing and adding flavors, one thing I will say is I, I will caution that the, the flavors for these, I think, is too strong for cider. And the reason I say that is because it says on the little bottle that you should add one ounce per gallon. Now, keep in mind that we've got, you know, five and a half, almost six gallons in the brew bucket when you're adding. And I only added the four ounces because I only bought one bottle and I figured, ah, that'll probably be good. It was overpowering. It was too much. So this time when I add the uh, the pumpkin flavoring and I test that out, I'm probably only going to add one or two ounces to that five gallon bucket. I would agree. One ounce. Try with one ounce. If it wasn't enough, increase about a half. Don't don't go the whole hog too. Always you increase think so, huh? small small increment. But then that that's my experience because you know I can randomly chop and drop and freaking add in here whatever. But if you go by small increments. You can, in my opinion, uh, find the perfect taste and you can recreate that taste because you write everything down. That's something you don't do. You don't write things down, do you? No, I hate doing paperwork. Dude, it's me. I hate paperwork as well, but this is cider brewing. This is serious, serious business, brat. <laughs> No, it probably would help for me to keep... I've, I've kind of kept track of, mm, I'd say, the big things in my head, like how I've done different things. But I like to pretty much distill the process down to a specific set of instructions where it's... Uh, I think you you had a good way of, of explaining it where things were like compartmentalized and so that I could take a take and, and shift an instruction here or there to change up the brew. But otherwise, the process is mostly the same. Yeah. So especially like getting started, everything starts out as the same and then, you know, maybe what flavor I add or if I even add a flavor is different but everything else the, the whole process follows along the same way because I just I, I like to simplify it as much as possible so I can just get through the process as quickly as possible without having to really put a lot of thought into it like find find what works distill that down get it to a streamlined process and just go through that every time yeah I think that's how I described you you're a comp- you're a compartmentalized um, brewer whereas I think I'm I'm the guy that likes to micromanage the corn from shit when it comes to cider brewing <laughs> Not the most colorful of descriptions, but that's that's how I tend to micromanage it. I, I do I weigh things out. I've got a I've got a I've got a scale that can do the the like two point two decimal points of weight. <laughs> that's how bad I am. Yeah, I just don't see myself getting that uh, detailed with it. But you see, there's a difference between yourself and me. And when it comes to uh, brewing ciders, you like just to I wouldn't say slapdash. That's just not that's just not what what you are. I say you're more of a a guy that enjoys the experience and just wants to get it over with so you can drink his damn cider whereas with yeah, me I'm, I'm chasing I'm, I'm chasing I'm hunting for a particular taste and you know, when I get that taste I can reproduce it again because I've written the damn thing down I've got like look each brew takes about four A4 pages seriously it, it, it's, it's that bad <laughs> it's just wow. that bad <laughs> That's that's a bit nuts. No, it, it, I, 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 this is this is even worse. I shouldn't be saying this, but even to the temperature of the water that goes into actually making the the cider and the temperature of the of the apple concentrate and the temperature of the cold water that's in and and, and you mix. Oh, I'm bad, very bad. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> 
No, it, no it, arguments from this no. side of the pond. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting any, honestly. It, it got to a point where I was actually um, worried that I was um, with, with the, you know, with the sanitizer and stuff and whatever have you. I was worried that I was over sanitizing, so I started writing how much sanitizer I used, and then I worked out that all you need is is a tablespoon of the stuff, and it basically it's it it can clean like ten buckets with a tablespoon. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, it, the the nice thing about the sanitizer that I use is that it it has this little squeeze thing where you squeeze the bottle and then it comes into this little measuring cup and then you take the lid off and pour it and you can you can it's got measuring gauges for half an ounce or a full ounce and a full ounce is supposed to take care of like five gallons of water. So yeah, each time I'm sanitizing things, I'm usually only having to use like half an ounce. Well, the the sanitizer I use is a dry powder. Ah, and, okay. And that's why I say a tablespoon can clean like ten ten bloody gallons or something. Stupid, and I, I I like the fact that it's double concentrated because whatever bacteria is in this doubly dead. Because I, I don't want my cider turning into tripe and and horrible stuff because I want to drink this stuff, you know. Yeah, I think I think you're definitely doing overkill. Um, both with maybe the quantity of uh, sanitizer you're using and the length of time, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, but but I think you probably could shorten your process, uh, it not have to necessarily do it that much. <laughs> So, Drake, are you telling me I should um, adopt my cider brewing um, on a wing and a prayer? I don't know about a wing and a prayer. I mean, I think there's a happy medium in there somewhere, you know, where you're not uh, having to to detail the exact level down to the half millimeter of water and, you know, temperature and everything else. Please note, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time Drac has ever told me to relax when it comes to uh, these sorts of things. Because when it comes to other things, I'm quite lackadaisical. Yeah, comes yeah. To if other we could get you to put this kind of attention <laughs> into the podcast, we'd have some real something <laughs> there, right? <laughs> Yeah, because you know when it, it's funny because when it comes to the podcast, I'm the exact opposite, and I get a lot more detail oriented. And I think uh, in some ways G does that too. But you're also just like like today. Let's just show up, start the recording, and I'll just throw out a topic. <laughs> yeah, throw out a topic. But but we wouldn't have to throw up a topic if someone actually did what he said he did. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's absolutely true. No, but listen, it was it wasn't your fault, honestly. It was a case of OBS and its weird setting. Uh, I don't know what the hell that program does or why but um yeah i just uh, periodically i know that it does it if i like disconnect my computer and then reconnect the cables it'll switch the audio settings back to default but i haven't moved the computer since the last recording i did and i and i remember i did a recording uh i think I'm trying to remember what the last game was i record i can't remember what it was now but um and it recorded the audio for that just fine and then for whatever reason when i started doing the recording this uh this past weekend it's it, it it must have switched back to default because the only thing on the recording was my voice off the mic. <laughs> yep, and you guys missed an absolute treat that was now lost to the ether. It was Drac, G, and myself planning our trip to Rez, and you should have heard the hilarity. It was better well, it, than this little podcast we're doing now. It was excellent. I think I wouldn't have described it as us planning. I think it, it, I would have described it as me trying desperately to keep us on topic, and, and <laughs> you guys constantly derailing, derailing. the topic. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you a little secret. G and I were typing into the into our private chat, going, "How can we derail it now?" <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> so they're really finding a topic to derail because it's so easy to derail a conversation when it has to be serious. It has to be. We just derail it. Easy, simple derail by throwing in, "Oh yeah, so um yeah, that that was that was the thing." And then G jumps on it, then I jump on it, and Drac goes, "Oh fuck it! Oh yeah, let it carries on with us." And then twenty minutes later we're still no further than what we were <laughs> yeah it it took it it took us almost two hours of conversation to to really i think we finally figured out a place to stay and uh you know how we were going to arrange like what days we were going to travel and then the uh, the following day it was just g and i where i figured out my flights and where i'm going to meet him in london before we uh take a train up to meet you that's news to me anyway guys thank you very much for listening to drac and i talk all things cider related particularly when it comes down to the bring process i tell you what if you guys ever 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 feel the need to get absolutely ring bolted plastered hammered smashed trashed rashed bashed thinking more words that rhyme with ashed um 
Um, please go to Amazon, pick yourself up a $25 brew kit. All you need essentially, dude, is water. That's essentially all you need, okay? And you have got yourself 24 liters of the finest brewed cider you have made. And then it's like a bug. Once it's bit, you know, it, you don't stop. I, I, well, I don't know about $25. The kit I picked up was 65, but it was well worth the money. Well, the, the kit I bought was 25 pounds. Oh, are you talking about the, you're just talking about the juice kit. I'm yeah. talking about the, the other materials that you need, the buckets and the stuff that you need in order to actually do it because you yeah, gotta yeah, have yeah. something to put it in you don't essentially you don't even need a bucket you just need somewhere to put the damn brew and let it do its thing essentially you just need that apple juice and the yeast kit and everything else falls into plan however drac is right go to amazon buy yourself the full brew kit it just makes things so much easier cut it there i suppose yep